The following program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Run With Fire Ministries. You're watching All Together And you're watching All Together Now. And you're watching All Together Now. Talk about worship, salvation, and healing. You're watching all together. God's gonna get a hold of you. Did you hear me? I said God's gonna get a hold of you. Get ready because your life is about to get wrecked. It's about Jesus. Founded on salvation, worship, and healing, we run with fire. Sounds of revival, intimate worship, and fresh word. Live from the Runwood Fire Studio in Orlando, Florida. All together now. With Roy and Melanie Fields. And welcome to another edition of All Together Now. I'm your host, Roy Fields. This is my wife, Melanie Fields. I want to ask you a question today. Do you know if there's a better place than heaven when you die? I believe there is. I want to read something out of John chapter 17, verse 3. Listen to this, okay, if you're watching this program today. Verse 3, Jesus said these words, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one and only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Friends, today I want to tell you, I do believe there's a better place than going to heaven. It's simply knowing God. What better could it be than knowing the Lord himself? Mm -hmm. Melanie, in 1996, I can honestly remember going to a revival in Brownsville Assembly of God in Pensacola, Florida. You and I went to the same thing. And I got to know God like never before. And I've never turned away since. Like I've never... No matter what I've done or where I've been, I've always come back to knowing him more. Yeah. Has that been the same for you? Yeah. In fact, you know, we went at different times to the Brownsville Revival, but um, we had so many different experiences where it came from just being nominal Christianity or just a a name, um, a thing we did to being a real relationship. And we could all say that when you get to know somebody close, whether it be a spouse Mm. or a mate or somebody, there's something fulfilling, something that fills that need. And when we got to know God, that's what it was like. It was like taking just an acquaintance and turning them into somebody that you knew very intimately, knew everything about them, they knew about you. And it just changed our whole life. And Jesus said, he said, if you've seen me you've seen the father yeah so knowing God is really the most important thing if all you're wanting to do in this life is just say I can't wait to get out of here because the world is getting so bad first of all that's a perspective I've read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation it says we win (laughs) we win so it's perspective you know what somebody also said to me one time recently they said oh we're in the last days I know we're in the last days Because these are definitely my last days. And your last days. (laughs) And your last days. If you're alive, these are our last days. And they were for the people 100 years ago. And when Jesus returns, those will be the last days. But it matters to do something today. And I tell you, I want to encourage you on this program to get to know God like never before. How does that happen? We've only got a few short moments here to let you know a couple things. We pursue on this program, Melanie and I, mm-hmm. this is celebrating 10 years of full-time ministry this year. Yeah. And it has been quite an amazing journey. Mm-hmm. Um, but we endeavor to know God with everything within us. He's given us his word and he's given us his presence. You know, as we pray and we seek the Lord, as we seek him in his face, if you're, if you're real with God, God will be real with you, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the experience that we have is not just for us. It's for every individual. It is. For every person who becomes hungry or thirsty to know it God. Is. So we want to encourage you. You know what? Keep tuning in. Watch this and see what happens. God will touch you in a powerful way. We're going to worship a little bit right now. And uh, I want to take you to someplace very close to my heart. It's where I was born and raised in Binghamton, New York. And we visited this place um, 
It was just a few months ago, actually, and we did a live recording with my new record that's out. But I want you just to take time to worship the Lord. This song is called All Together Now. It's the name of our show, actually, to open up this broadcast. And uh, part of the words say, One cross, one empty grave, one love strong enough to save. Will you worship with us now? Let's go there right now to Binghamton, New York, and let's worship the Lord. Thank you. 
right back to All Together Now.
I said that prayer with my mom and I looked around and I saw everything. I remember saying to the Lord, yep, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. I could pinpoint it to the seed that came into my heart of the dream I was going to do and fulfill it would have been right here in this church at the corner of that pew right there. I was looking at the preacher. I looked around. All the people were watching those that came down. There was a bunch of people here. And, uh, and then I just said, dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Fill me, save me, forgive me as a sinner. Wash my heart clean. Make me brand new. I make you, Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my heart and use me for your will. In Jesus' name, amen. I bought him a guitar and he's up at like two in the morning. I'm like, come on now, you know you have to go to school the next day and everything. And he says, Mom, I'm getting a song. I have to write it down. <laughs> you know? I'm like, well, it doesn't work in your schedule, you know. It's like, I'm sorry, but, you know, you're going to have to fit school in here somehow. I think he stayed with us six years, you know, yeah. from, that, from that point, five or six years. If he spent six years with us, our house... Our house was more like a church than a house, our home. In the living room and then in the barn, and it was actually where he lived. And it was a charismatic movement in the days of the 70s and 80s, and Roy grew up around that. He didn't know that was anything special. To him, it was just normal, but his mother was obsessed with God, and Jesus was her best friend and her everything, and she got criticized for uh, uh, ruining her son because all she had him doing was church stuff. There was a youth group here, I think it was. They had groups for everything. And he was used to do worship in the youth group. This is the way to the youth group. It's pretty cool. Roy, I remember him. He was coming to the group for a couple months. And he asked me if he goes, can I come and play in the youth band, our worship team? So he played for a while, and it was good. I just knew there's something special about him. Roy always had my guitar. He always had my guitar. He loved the guitar. And through those years, I taught him the basics. That's it. And of course, later on, he became an integral part of the worship team, especially on the keyboard. I just always remember him with the guitar. And he had a guitar where he, I remember he drew all over the back of it. Whenever he had the opportunity to be on stage and playing with other people, he would. He would jump at the opportunity. I remember one time when I was singing with him, we came out on stage, and he put his hands right on the keyboard, and that was it. Everyone was gone in the spirit. We didn't sing a thing. People were getting healed. People were getting touched. Anything he sings is just full of anointing. And, and I love the music that he picks. I know that anytime he would play, you could just feel it, that you knew that he had the anointing on him. He was just so passion-filled um, and sensitive to God's spirit. So it was nice to see that in a youth. And a lot of us were kind of just, we went to youth just to be with friends. But you could tell that he was he was real, you know, he really wanted to go after God. From when he was a young child, I listened to his guitar, but he was always good. One day he said to me, you know what, I think I want to play the piano. And he just went over and he sat down at the piano and he just started playing. He had never played before ever. Yeah, he definitely had a, a, an anointing, a touch on him. He was, he was gifted in music for never taking uh, music lessons as, as I didn't either. So we kind of related to that. that we, neither one of us took music lessons, but we were both worship leaders. I believe it was 21 years ago that I met him. I don't think Roy realizes the impact he had on me in regards to music. Seeing him play struck a passion in me to play. I wanted to play just as good as him. I like seeing my father because it's like spending time with him. Sometimes I feel the presence of God when we worship. When he started playing, the anointing was there. You could feel the presence of God, and so I was astounded, and so was other people. This is their new youth room. 
and I would meet friends in here. I would look at the, the keyboard and just get up and try to tinkle on it as long as I could play it. He was used quite mightily right off the bat when he started playing guitar and the keyboard and everything. You know, Roy and I grew up in this church together, and I've known him ever since we were kids, young kids, you know, and, uh, and all throughout our journey of, you know, whether it be childhood or those teenage years, and then we, we both kind of got involved in, in music and we were involved in the worship team in this church. Um, this is actually the first time that I'm getting to, to worship with him as an adult in a setting like this. And, that's just so special because here we are, two guys grew up together in this church. Um, God had given us musical abilities to go out there to worship Him with, and now we get to bring those abilities together. He had the calling on his life, I'll tell you why, because he was different in the sense that he was outspoken, he was not afraid. I believe that God was cultivating him uh, the same way Paul on the road to Damascus was cultivated before the call. When God called Roy, he had already had the stuff in him that was needed. It was already inerrant in him to be a minister of the Word of God through music. We'd never seen anything explode like Lakeland did. So we were shocked at first, and then I looked at it because I'd seen these other models. We can just go by our, what we've seen. And so I thought this thing would just grow, and I thought I'm looking at the vehicle. God's going to use it to touch America and the whole earth. And I mean, it just went across the earth uh, overnight. First started at Ignited Church, I think, in Lakeland, and they kept going to bigger and bigger venues. There was 10,000 people a day showing up. They were flying in from all over the place, and I realized that there was no small call on his life, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's got that gift. He really does. It's a gift. Like, some people are just like, listen to Christian music. It's like, it's just like other music, but it's not. It's really, it's godly music. And godly music puts, it's not like just regular music. It puts something in your heart and it changes you. You know, there's praise and there's worship. And I'm sure Roy has a lot of great praise songs as well. But I think where he shines is in the worship songs. He worships with all of his heart. And there's a lot of worship leaders that don't really do that. It's all about show and stuff. He believed God's vision for his life and some of us could stop short of that. But uh, with Roy, he wanted to fulfill that vision of revival and see people get saved, healed and delivered. And him and his wife have stayed uh, faithful to that calling. He's living his destiny. He's doing what he was called to do. And it's very exciting to watch that. It's an exciting thing to see it, to watch it, to know who he is and what he's doing. And he just goes on and says what's in his heart and he's very open and stuff. And I think that's really awesome and inspiring. He's a great guy. He loves the Lord, you could tell. He's genuine, he's true, he's honest. He loves the Lord and that's, that's the main thing. My message to you from Binghamton, New York, this is Roy Fields. And I'm saying this, if God can do it in me, He can do it for you. You are God. We now return to All Together Now. And welcome back to All Together Now. I want to ask you a question. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? You know, Melanie, we said at the top of the program that knowing God is even better than going to heaven. Yeah. And I would dare to say knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior today is better than knowing anything else on this planet while you're alive. And I want to share something with you. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. It says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All you have to do today, and if you'll do it with me today and Melanie, is just give your life to Jesus. He'll turn it around for you. Are you going to have problems? Absolutely. Are you going to have struggles and trials? Jesus had struggles and trials. But he kept his eyes focused on God, his Father, and he knew God. I want you to know the Lord today. 
Pray this prayer with me quickly. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm sorry for what I've done. I believe in you. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and that you gave your life for me. I receive your salvation. I take your forgiveness and I ask you to forgive me. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, it's that easy. If you prayed that prayer, there is a number right now at the bottom of your screen. Call that number right now. If you can't get through, leave a message. But we want you to connect with us. We want to hear from you. You can also send an email as well to runwithfire at me.com. Melanie, we're about to close out the broadcast. Yeah. You know, there's people watching right now from all over the world, and they've watched Christian television. They've watched other stations and channels for so long. I think we are endeavoring to be real with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to be ourselves, yes. not be the TV personality, just to be honest and real. Yes. How do we do that? Well, you know, we grew up in the church all our lives, mm -hmm. and many people, they've had some type of experience with church, but we realized as teenagers and 20-year-olds that the church is not the same as Jesus. Right. And sometimes we get a bad experience, sometimes we get a good experience, but when you get to know Jesus, you realize it's about real everyday today stuff. He wants to be a part of your everyday. Yeah. He wants to be in the mess with you. He wants to be in the good times with That's you. Right. And he knows you got problems, and he's, he's okay with that. <laughs> he just wants to be there, yeah. you know, just like your family wants to be with you a lot of times. And uh, we, we want to show that real side of what it's like to walk with Jesus every day. And that you can have a touch from him. You can have an encounter with him. We want to offer that and Absolutely. show that. And he is real. Listen, he's real. He wants to be real in your life. He just needs the opportunity. So if you prayed that prayer, please contact us. The number down at the bottom of your screen. If you can't get through, leave a message. Somebody from our office will call you back. But we want to hear from you. And uh, we're looking forward to being with you next week on All Together Now, same time. Same channel. God bless you. We'll see you now. Bye-bye. Next week on All Together Now. And he looks at me, I want him to say, well done, you did everything I told you to do. With everything within you. The following program was paid for by the friends and partners of Run With Fire Ministries.